Good morning, ASEAN. Fresh up your world, you thought your idea every Monday to Friday with us from 7.30 to 8 a.m. I am Nira Shamali Saklamia. And I'm Wina Tung Prasid. It's Monday the 5th of August and regarding another round of political protests, Good yes. Nira had that happened yesterday. The Thai army <clears throat> uh, yesterday dismissed the possibility of a military coup amid the escalating political tension. Many reports circulating in social media have no basis in fact and falsely link the army with politics. People should not be overly sensitive and should exercise good judgment in what information they take in, according to <laughs> army spokesman Colonel Winatai Sukwali. The Army and its Chief General Prayut Chan mm -hmm. Ucha have been busy assisting flood victims across the country and organizing celebrations of Her Majesty the Queen's birthday. The public should not be alarmed about any cross-country movements of Army equipment that usually take place at this time of year. The atmosphere at the anti-government rally in Lumpini Park by the People's Army to overthrow the Thaksin regime grew more excited. Organizers put up a large temporary stage in front of King Rama VI monument with a message, time to destroy the country's up, tyrants must leave. Speakers took turns out uh, on stage to attack the government. The movement's leaders said the rally would remove the Yinglak government from power within seven days. Vendors set up street stalls to sell white masks and t-shirts emblazoned with anti-government messages. Security was stepped up at government house with barbed wire and security officials at every gate. Former Prime Minister Thaksin Chinawat on Facebook ridiculed the rally, saying many core leaders were people with noteworthy achievements. The Democrats were reprimanded for siding with the protesters. The opposition bloc should relax and wait for its turn to form the government, he said. He also said many leaders of the anti-government campaigns were retired senior military or, pol or police brass with broken hearts for missing out on key positions during reshuffles when they were still in the service. Many retirees' names had also been monopolized by the movement without their consent, he said. Democrat Party List MP Ong At Klam Pai Boon said if the government was sincere about not helping any particular person in debating an amnesty bill on Wednesday, it must not try to pass the bill in three straight readings and must broadcast the debate on state television channels. Mm -hmm. Thai spokesman Pram Prong Noparit criticized Democrat Suteb Tuk Suban for vowing to lead a campaign to overthrow the government. Pram Hong also played down coup rumors, saying the people who started spreading coup rumors in social media harbored political motivations and they should take responsibility for their actions. And now let's update on Myanmar on the investment side as the Myanmar Minister of for labor, employment, and social security, I mean, who is also a chairman of the Central Working Committee for the Implementations of the Davos says, say that the Italian Thai development company has yet to cease the operations at the Davos Special Economic Zone and will quit after the treaty between Myanmar and Thailand goes into effect. The company is facing financial difficulties for the project and failed to implement the project to within the required time frame. Myanmar and Thailand co-established the main company's special purpose, Vehicle I, to continue the project and registered it in Thailand. The public concern that making the registration in the Thailand can make the Dawei Zs to control by Thailand, but the project will be administered by Myanmar. For the Dawei Zs and its related projects to be successful, Myanmar and Thailand will have to sign agreement between shareholders and other agreements. Both countries will hold equal shares in the company through Myanmar's Foreign Economic Relations Department or FERD, FERD and Thailand's neighboring country's economic development or NIDA. According to the set on chairperson for Rules and Regulations Subcommittee and Vice Chairman of Central Bank of Myanmar say that although the progress in Davos says is halted, the company which are replaces in place of Italian Thai development company have to give back the money invested by the Italian Thai company.
He said that the highway road constructed by the Italian Thai company is good enough to drive big trucks. The company which will implement the railway says have to give back the cost of the road to the Italian Thai company. The Cambodian National Election Committee, or the NEC, yesterday said that it would form an ad hoc committee to look into alleged fraud and ballot rigging during the national election on July the 28th without participation of the opposition party. The initial election results showed that the Cambodian People's Party, or the CPP, of long-serving Prime Minister Hun Sen was 68 parliamentary seats and the main opposition Cambodian National Rescue Party, or CNRP, of recently pardoned leader Sam Rainsy got the remaining 55 seats. But the CNRP, claiming serious irregularities, rejected the results and called for an independent investigation committee with the United Nations as a referee. Sam Rainsy said in a letter to NEC Chairman Im Soi Day on Saturday that the CNRP wants a joint committee with the participation of the CNRP, the CPP, civil society, national and international observers. The CNRP wants the NEC to act as a coordinator and the United Nations as a referee. In response to the request, Im Soi Day said that the NEC felt very regretful to see more conditions added by the CNRP for the establishment of the proposed Joint Probe Committee. He said the NEC could allow the establishment of a joint committee comprising the NEC, the CPP, CNRP and members, while national and international officials could be observers. According to him, it is beyond the NEC's authority to invite and a UN representative to join the proposed joint committee, the NEC will set up an ad hoc committee to look into irregularities. And in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysians rescuers yesterday found three bodies at sea as they hoped at the fated for the 37 other Indonesians who went missing days earlier when their boats sank on their way home to celebrate the eighth outfit. The wooden boat was believed to be carrying 44 people, including women and children, from Malaysia's southern state of Johor to Indonesia's Batam Island. It sank in heavy sea seas last on Thursday, and four men were rescued on Friday. Malaysian authorities found two bodies on Sunday, while fishermen discovered another corpse, the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency said in a statement. However, Amran Dond and officials with the agency say that it is believed that these three bodies, two women and one man, are victims of the boat accident. But however, he said that 37 people are still missing. Another maritime official said that the bodies were found near a group of islands south of the well-known resort island of Tioman as strong currents are believed to have swept away the victims. The accident occurred 13 nautical miles or about 24 kilometers off the coast and the passengers are believed to have been illegal migrants working in Malaysia who wanted to return to their country to celebrate its outfit the end of the Muslim fasting month next week without passing border control. Survivors Aiden Muliadi was quoted by the Star Daily as saying that when high waves hit the boat, the passengers panic and crowd to one side of it, causing it to overturn. He said that the passengers tried to hold on to the overturned boat in the storm, but the vessel sank. He also said that he managed to hold on to a plastic container filled with hot petrol, some of which spilled and scalded his chest, abdomen and hands. Amran said that the four men would be handed over to the Indonesian consulate officials to be returned to their country. An estimated of four million foreigners, mostly from poorer countries in the region such as Indonesia and Myanmar, are working in Malaysia. Many of them are illegal. They fill low-paying jobs shunned by locals on plantations construction sites and in the factories. Still in Malaysia, in Penang, there is a proposal of Kunyasha to have a bike lane and the public is now given the chance to that give their really opinion about it. Let's find out more in this report by The Star Malaysia. Penang's proposed bicycle lane along Jalan Tanjung Tokong is now open for public feedback until September 3rd. 
Initiated by the state government and Penang Municipal Council, the green road sharing concept is to address the lack of bicycle lane infrastructures on the island. The proposed bicycle lane, already a hotspot among cyclists, is about 30 kilometers long between the Tanjung Tokong Fire Station and Jalan Kuala Sungai Pinang in Balik Pulau. Four 30-meter-long mock-up sections of the lane have been placed opposite of the Dalat International School to test the durability and suitability of the materials proposed to be used. Penang Chief Minister Lim Guang Ing led a group of cyclists to test out the three available sections of the lane on Sunday. He says public consultation is needed to measure the level of acceptance and support before the lane becomes permanent. Guan Ing hopes the bicycle lane will in turn promote a healthy lifestyle, encourage tolerance among road users and encourage cycling as an alternative mode of transportation. And coming up next after the break, let's have a look at the bilateral relationships between Chinese and Vietnam and also France and Vietnam. His foreign minister started his Vietnam visit on Sunday to boost bilateral ties amid the disputes over territories in the South China Sea. Wang Yi met his Vietnamese counterpart Pan Bin Min on Sunday before meeting Prime Minister Nguyen Tan Dung <coughs> and the General Secretary of Communist Party Nguyen Phu Trong on Monday. The two ministers discuss international and regional issues as well as ways to deepen cooperation between the two countries, especially in economic relation. This will be the second time the two foreign ministers have met in less than two months. They met in Beijing on June the 20th when Pan Bin Min escorted Vietnamese uh, President Trong Tan Sang on his first visit to China. Vietnam has several times this year accused Chinese vessels of harassing its fishermen in what it calls the East Sea, also known as the South China Sea. Addressing a high-level forum between China and the Association of Southeast Asian Nations in Bangkok, Thailand, on Friday, Wang warned that the territorial disputes between China and a few <clears throat> ASEAN nations might overshadow Beijing's ties with the regional group. Wang has visited Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore and Brunei during his ASEAN tour. Still in Vietnam, as Vietnamese Foreign Minister Pham Binh Minh and his French counterpart Laurent Fabius held talks yesterday during the which they agreed upon main content and on a roadmap to lift the two countries' relations to strategic partnership. According to state-run Vietnam news agencies, the two foreign ministers shared a view the bilateral relations, traditional friendship and multifaceted cooperations have been positive development in recent times and focus on concrete measures to gain more in the time to come. Accordingly, economic and trade linkages and exchange of delegations at all levels will be stepped up while the existing dialogue mechanisms in diplomacy, defense, economics, trade, investment and science technology will be strengthened and fully utilized. Ties between localities will be encouraged and French groups and businesses will be helped to seek investment opportunities as well as expand operations in Vietnam, particularly in the fields of France technological advantages such as infrastructure, energy, transport, aerospace, health, agricultural and food processing. The two sides agreed to enhance corporations in the fields of education and training, culture, science and technology. They also affirmed continual close corporations and collaborations at regional and international forums. The talk took place as part of the French Foreign Minister's three-day visit to Vietnam on August 3 to 5 at the invitations of Minh at a time when the two countries are celebrating the 40th anniversary of their diplomatic ties. Tiger Air is in talks with the Indian budget carriers, including SpiceJet and Indigo, to strike a deal in which will offer Singapore travelers easy connections to many destinations in India. 
The partnerships will also grow Tiger Air's business in Asia, as uh, said is Singapore chief Ho Yun Sang. With a tie-up, we will boost our connectivity and network in India and at the same time carry more, many more Indian travelers to our Asian destinations, he told the Straits Times. Amid speculation that the low-cost carrier is also eyeing an equity stake in an Indian carrier, Ho said there was no such plans for now. India had previously barred foreign carriers from owning local airlines, but the law was changed last September to permit holdings of up to 49 percent. Abu Dhabi's Itihad Airways has already announced plans to buy around a quarter of Indian private carrier Jet Airways, while Air Asia is in talks with India's Tata Group to set up a new airline. Tiger Air Chairman J.Y. Pillay, who met the Straits Times at the airline's annual general meeting earlier this week, said even though Malaysian Airlines uh, Air Asia has moved in, there's still room for another budget carrier to enter the Indian market. For now, though, it is not Tiger Air's priority. He said, we have our hands full with Tiger Air Mandala or Indonesia and Tiger Air um, Philippines. Singapore-based Tiger Air's holdings owns about a third of the Indonesian carrier and 40 percent of Tiger Air Philippines as well as Tiger Air Australia. The group wholly owns Tiger Air Singapore, which has a tie-up with Singapore Airlines' long-haul budget carrier Scoot, offering bug, uh, baggage transfers for passengers with connecting flights. The plan is to offer the same in India, said Ho. Eventually, airlines may market tickets together and plan their schedules so that passengers do not have to wait too long between flights. Tiger Air currently flies to six destinations in India, including Chennai, Bangalore, and Hyderabad. And that wraps up our Good Morning Austin awesome edition. Mm -hmm. See you again, same time, same place, same channel. Thank you so much for joining. I'm Vina Jumprasit. And I am Nirasha Melissa Lumi. Sawadee khaa. Sawadee khaa.